As I eat, I browse my tablet and check out the different options for the con today. There are panels to be held by all sorts of people, cosplay, contests, and lots of merchandise are purchased. I wish I can check out everything. Once I'm done eating up, I clean up and drive myself to the train station. Kaori waits for me on the platform. Hey. She turns around. Uh, wait, she turns around at the sound of my voice and smiles. Hey. All ready to go? Of course. I mapped out the most effective way to see all the best panels and guest stars while still leaving time to browse around the marketplace. Is there a situation that she doesn't have to strategize still? I did say I want to hit as much as possible. Sounds like a game plan. Soon our train pulls into the station and we quiet down as we get and we quiet down as we get on. The hum of the motor makes me feel sleepy and my eyes droop. Calorie stares out the window. I wonder what she's thinking. After a lengthy ride, we arrive in the city and head to the convention center. The first thing I need notice is this looks exactly like the school. The sheer number of um, people. I feel like I'm back in New York after living in what's it called Izuki for so long. I almost forget what a crowd room, a crowded room feels like. I drink in. Wait, what? I drink in the sights and sounds. The constant buzz of laughter and chatter hangs heavy in the air and circles around in the line wait in the circle around the lines of booths i try to read all the posters especially the ones with cute girls on them suddenly calorie grabs my arm and i what is it jlit back three outing already feeling guilty she wasn't paying attention to me though as she points to a group of cosplayers dressed in ninja just as ninja rangers Go get a picture with them. You don't think they'll mind? I think they'll enjoy they'd enjoy the attention. Okay. She seems giddy as she practically bounces over to the group. I see them all grin and nod enthusiastically and Kyori motions me to take a photo. As I pull out my phone, the Rangers surround Gallery each. They each strike their character signature pose. It's like I'm looking at the real Ninja Ranger posters. Thanks, guys. They give her a thumbs up and seem pleased with themselves. Kauri returns, looking at the picture. That actually came out pretty well. He doesn't have to sound so surprised. I'm an expert photographer. Oh, sorry. I probably should have asked if you wanted your photo taken. I shake my head. It's fine. I'm just here to suck in the environment. As she nods and grabs my hand. Come on, let's go check out the first panel on our list. Gowrie seems to know exactly where she's going as she drags me through the crowd. Finally, we stop before a big sign that says, How to make visual novels. <laughs> I didn't know you like visual novels. I'm reading one. She shrugs. I guess it never came up. Because I'm reading one. I bet Gallery plays them for the same reason I do. <laughs> it's obvious what a character is. She must enjoy the storyline. I haven't played too many, but what I enjoy about them is they focus um, creating. Wait, on. Wait, what? Focus a lot on creating an interesting storyline and plot. Dari nods excitedly. Yes, exactly. Most games focus so much on player control. Nah, fuck it, man. We got we had each other option. I grin. Oh, it makes. Oh, wait, it all makes sense now. Dari raises an eyebrow. Huh? What do you mean? Don't worry. Even the Erosians can have good story line, lines and character developments. I'm not judging you. Dari face flushes. That's not why I play them. But you do play them. <laughs> You're twisting my words. I play them for the story. I skip any of the other stuff. Lies. Sure. She punches me on the arm, although more gently than she usually does. Stop being a pervert. I rub my arm. Still hurts. Anyway, 
I think learning how to make a visual novel would be interesting. It would be. Let's go find a good seat. Gary nods, and we head inside. Before long, the room fills up, and the panelist takes their seats in front of the room. Hello, everyone. I am Dishu from Pixel Fame, and these are my colleagues. Of course, you're selling nerds. Hello, everyone. I am Dishu from Pixel Fame, and these are my colleagues. The team turns to introduce themselves as Kate, Sun, Sunshum, Rishu, and Chris. So, who's ready to make a visual novel? I bet you're gonna hear Kari like, Yeah! Yeah! The crowd cheers in affirmation. I look over at Kauri, who watches intently. Let's talk about how to make a school slice of life romance visual novel. Wow, it sounds just like this freaking game. We have a four-step approach to this. First, you should pick popular character tropes for the romance options and make them all into waifu material. I would highly recommend including at least one Sundere archetype since it seems to be a popular choice. How do you know, man? Girl, I'm just a freaking jerk. Secondly, make sure you have an abundance of comedy. Clever fourth wall breaking may be appropriate. Thirdly, you want to make sure the player is engaged. Give them choices so they feel immersed and active in the world. Shit, yeah, man. They're, they're telling me I don't give a visual novel. Oh, this tissue guy, right? Yeah, ha ha. I know. He raises some good points. And lastly, you must include words and phrases like "oni chan," "sugoi desne," "senpai," and "baka" at every possible opportunity. Dude, his voice cracks like "oni chan," "sugoi desu," "sugoi desu ni," "senpai," "baka." If people start saying your project is for weeaboos, then you're on the path to success. <laughs> weeaboos. I think weeaboos is like, uh... I forgot, I, don't, I forgot what it means. It's like, it's a word for people who, uh... Who try to act Japanese when they're not Japanese. So I'm guessing this is a weeaboo uh, visual novel. Uh, the panel continues... Well, no, people act... You know, say they're Japanese and they're not Japanese. Um, the panel continues and each person elaborates their specific role to provide a lot of insider information and the crowd seems to be enjoying it. It's refreshing to see that although these guys take their craft seriously, they certainly don't take themselves seriously. In addition to this, they provide inside information about budgeting for indie development. We learned that some compromises have to be made due to limited resources such as black silhouettes instead of full sprites for extra characters or even cameo characters. This shoot reassures that uh, us as, as developers you have to trust your fan base to understand. That's it from us. Thank you all for coming out. And tons of reused backgrounds, right? The crowd claps as they exit. Kauri and I also head out. What do you think? He perks up. It was really good. They covered a broad range of subjects. Agree. So what's on the agenda? What's next on the agenda? Well, I'm looking forward to the panel with singer Emma Lee. It's not for another hour though. So let's go explore the market. Sounds good to me. What the fuck? Um, I think I see some anime in here. Uh, that looks like Sword Art Online. Asuna, I remember it. I don't know who the hell that is. Uh, this looks like a One Piece face. That looks like a Naruto thing going on there. Uh, I'm trying to pull up, like, things I would know. Give me a second. Oh, wait, that's the assassination classroom guy, like, right here. Uh, I don't know what the hell that is. Um, anything else? No, okay. 
Actually, I actually don't even know what the hell this looks like. Oh, look, Shuriken. That's definitely Naruto. Um, we head off to the marketplace to browse all the booster merchandise ranging from manga, wall scrolls, cosplays, mock weapons, artwork, and tons more. Uh -huh. Gowry squeals and darts towards one of the stalls. He picks up a stuffed yellow thing with red cheeks and squeezes it to her cheeks. Wait, squeeze it close to her cheeks. Pikachu! It's so cute! <laughs> Pikachu! I stare at her. The last time I saw her like this was certainly after... Was what after a certain victory party and too many shots. Gowry noticed my stare and blushes and puts down the stuff Pikachu. If you're into that sort of thing. Get it for her as a gift. I pick up the Pikachu again, place um uh, bouncing on top of her head so it looks like it's giving her a hug and I look straight into her eyes. It's adorable. He blushes, then I turn to the vendor. How much? Wait, I can pay for it. No. Really? You don't No. I tap my card against the reader before Kintori can pull her pull out her own card. She pouts, then it looks like she wants to argue again. I put Pikachu in front of my face and pretend to talk to it. Don't make that face up, Mark. He's just being nice. Then I use the Pikachu and try to hug her face. She dodges, but I'm relentless. I can hear her giggle. <laughs> Stop. I grin and hand her wait and hand the gift to her. She smiles and squeezes it against her chest. Really? No thank you? Thank you. We wander around the marketplace for a while longer, spending equal time checking out people's cosplays as well as the booth. We found Pixel Fade stall and made a point to look at their merch. Uh, they have some really cool art and posters featuring something called Crystallion or whatever that is. I looked into that. That's a new anime these guys are coming out with. I mean anime, manga. Manga! <laughs> Visual novel, book, whatever, reader, thing. It's almost time for the MLE panel. Let's go! Let's lead the way, lady. Emily panel is already, uh, wait, wait a minute, before we do anything, oh, let's gotta get a picture, uh, the Emily panel is already mostly full by the time we show up, but we still managed to find decent seats, a few minutes later, the crowd erupts into cheers and applause as Emily walks out, she smiles and waves as she takes her seat, yeah, it's the solo panel. Hello, everyone. Oh, yes. Yes. Who is this? This looks like someone I've seen before in every single anime that exists. The blonde lady. Oh, oh, now we definitely gotta take a picture. <laughs> She's probably gonna be in, like, the next visual novel, probably. Because i seen, like... And a lot of, I looked it up, I don't really, I, it's the only visual novel I watched, but I did uh, watch Red. I did a bit of, um, studying the stuff, like, um, companies that, studios that make multiple visual novels, they like to take some of their characters that only do cameos, or have a small part in the story, and put them in a different visual novel. Um, the panel begins, and she's, um, she talks about what she has planned, including which song will be getting covered and how songs are created. Judging by the rapt attention of the audience, everyone seems to be enjoying the discussion. Soon as it, uh, soon as it comes time for the Q&A section of her panel, a line forms in front of the mic to ask her questions. What's your favorite cover to have worked on? The ones that are the most challenging are usually my favorite. <laughs> It's fun to try something new. The ones that are usually the most challenging are my favorite. Are usually my favorite, but it's fun to try something new. The guy grins as the next person steps to the microphone. Do you have any singing tips? Do you have any singing tips? Emily nods and looks determined. Practice and practice. 
and then when you think you've done enough, practice some more. It's a simple and boring answer, but it's the truth. That's true. <clears throat> because we only see the end result, it's easy to forget that each video includes hours of practice and work. The audience mumbles in agreement as another person reaches for the mic. Why are your lyrics different from the source translations? Oh, that guy's from Me Too from the Me Too comments. The rest of the audience glare at him, but Emily smiles quietly. Well, direct translations never fit the meter of the song, so they have to be altered slightly to fit and rhyme and flow. The guy doesn't seem content with the answer, judging by wait with the answer and ha uh, rudely hogs the mic. People grumble in irritation, but he ignores them. Yeah, but I took that language class in high school and used Google Translate, and it was all wrong. Emily continues to smile, although I can tell now it's a little strained. <laughs> it's hard if you've never tried it yourself, but if you take a direct translation and try to sing it to the song, you'll hear how awkward it sounds. The guy looks like he's about to ask another question, but one of the security guards reminds everyone that of the one question rule, and he reluctantly he yields the mic. The next person takes the microphone and smiles broadly. Do you sing in the shower? Any remainder um, tension dissipates as Emily chuckles. <laughs> yeah, and just as badly as everyone else. We um, we hear a yell from behind Lies. us. Lies. Both Emily and the crowd laugh. The rest of the Q&A sessions continue without incident. There are a collective awe as <clears throat> Emily concludes her panel and everyone rushes to get her autograph. The line is so long it stretches out into the hall. Can we get a signature? If it's not too much trouble, I think I'd like that. Sure thing. Wait patiently in line. Eventually it's Kaori's turn. Hey! Kaori blushes and stumbles to get her words out. Hi! Of course. Who should I make it out to? Cowrie, please. Um. Sorry, Emily nods and scribbles onto the, on a poster. All right, here you go. Cowrie grabs the poster and smiles. We take a quick photo with Emily and walk out into the hall. The line doesn't seem. Wait, the line doesn't seem to only have. Sh Wait, what? The line doesn't seem to have shortened any. Okay. Kaori has a dreamy look in her eye. I can't believe I got to meet Emily! I nod. Yeah, although I found it kind of strange. Hmm? Doesn't she sound exactly like May? Kaori, wait a minute! I can't believe... Kaori, please. The fake-ass looking wig? Alright. I can't believe... <laughs> that could be May. Gowrie's eyes wide. You think so too? I was thinking the exact same thing, but didn't want to say anything in case it was all in my head. What a weird, a weird coincidence, I suppose. We both nod. Okay. Next on the agenda. We spent a few hours at the con, alternating between listening to more panels and checking out the marketplace. As we went through Cowrie's list, thing and things begin to dwindle down. Cowrie checks her phone. It's getting pretty late. We should check into our hotel. Hotel? Sure. We managed to snag a room a few nights before the whole... Oh, uh, wait, what? Right before at the hotel, right around the corner from the event. Although, they would have been sold out, but we've got lucky. But we got lucky. We approach the front desk and Cowrie provides our name. The front desk agent types in her computer and frowns. I'm sorry, I can't seem to find your reservation. This. Do you have the confirmation number? Um, yeah, hold on. She rummages through her emails and recites a code. The front desk lady shakes us again and shakes her I'm head. I'm very sorry. Gallery shoves the phone in front of the agent and shows her the email. I don't understand. I booked it a few days ago. Here's the confirmation I got. 
Agent reviews it. Unfortunately, since she booked through a third party agency, there must have been a complication, and we never received the reservation. We're at full capacity for the room type that you booked. Oh, he looks worried. Isn't there anything you can do? I was expecting her to blow up as she is surprisingly calm. Kauri notices me staring at her. Um. Uh, nothing, sorry. Okay. Let me see. We do have a suite available. Since this was a system glitch, I'll waive the upgrade costs and we'll charge you the same price you were quoted for a standard room. Thanks, you really appreciate that. Sorry, Blinks. Thank you. No problem. Again, sorry for the inconvenience. She hands us our keys and goes through the usual spiel about the room. We hope you enjoy your stay. Oh, let me see that room though. <laughs> Gallery and I head into the other. I want to see if it's like a fully decked out bachelor pet penthouse. We enter the key as we walk in. My jaw drops. Yo, that looks so weird. <laughs> the suite is beautifully furnished with a king bed, um, a chase lodge. Lounge, sorry, a chase lounge, um, a two-person dining table and chairs by the wide window which overlooks the city, soft candle, plate, case, cast, beautiful, wait, uh, playful, fuck yeah, I can't read, soft candle light cast, playful shadows on the rose petals scattered on the bed and a box of chocolates is enticingly opened on the pillows, oh, a sweet ah, more like a honeymoon sweet. My eyes drift back. Wait, what? Back to one bed in the room. The so one bed in the room. Sorry. <laughs> oh no no no! Yes yes yes, baby. <laughs> okay okay. What are we gonna pick? Uh, I like where this is going. I'm not sure. Right? You know what? YOLO! I smile appreciatively at the display. I didn't know you had this side to ya, Cowrie. Her eyes widen and she punches me hard in the arm. Stop being a pervert! I didn't book this! She stomps to the phone and dials the front desk. What is this room? The room I booked had two beds. There's only one in here and other... weird things. What do you mean there are no more rooms with two beds? That's what... Yes, I can see there's a couch. Gowie grumbles and hangs up the phone. So, that sounds like it went well. Gowie sighs. <sighs> We're stuck with the room. Nothing else is available, and I doubt any other hotels will have rooms either due to the convention. Last train to Izuki departed an hour ago. Yeah. I look uh, between the lounge and a very comfortable, a very comfortable looking bed. And we share. I mean, the bed's pretty big. It can easily fit two people. Gallery blushes and shakes her head. Well then. <laughs> Fine, I'll take the bed then. Alright, I'll take the bed. I dive onto the bed. Starfish in the middle. What? What do you mean? I offered to share. You said no, so I'm taking the bed. Gallery scowls and clenches her hands into fists. Get off of there! Make me. She grabs a hold of my arms and tries to pull me off, barely able to move me. Then she crosses the other side of the bed, attempting to roll me off, but I plant myself firmly in place, and she's equally unsuccessful. Gallery pouts, pleading me with wide eyes. Ah, oh, the puppy dog eyes. Gallery's amateur compared to Nikki, who has. N Wait, what? Who would have known having a sister would have proved such useful training? Nice try. You are such a jerk! Gowie grabs extra pillows on the bed and lounge. What? Gowie grabs the extra pillows on the bed and the lounge. And creates a barrier on the right. Wait, what? Right down the middle of the bed. She sits down on. Wait, what? She sits down on her side. Wait, what? She sits down on her side as far as she can. Wait, as far... What? Oh, fuck, I can't read. She sits down far close to the far... Oh, fuck me. Okay, give me a second, guys. She sits down on her side as close 
to the far end of the bed as possible. I'm a fucking retard. You stay on your side, and I'll stay on mine. I'll break down that wall. I'm kidding. Uh, that's what I was saying from the start. No funny business. Yes, funny business. Fine. No funny business. <laughs> Sorry. Both ready. Wait, what? We both get ready for bed. I hadn't realized just how exhausted I was until my head hit the pillow. The bed is, um, wait, it's soft like a cloud cradling me. I can occasionally feel movement, but I'm not too tired to be a real distraction. It takes no time before I drift to sleep. My chest flies open in the darkness. I'm not sure what woke me, but I feel a small hand against my chest. Kawaii! Kawaii! That is so kawaii! Now let me get a quick picture. This is thumbnail material. This is like... Everyone hit that comment section. Hit that thumbs. Hit the subscribe button. Get those thumbs up. Like the video. Do do do. As my eyes adjust to the darkness, I look down to see Kaori's sleeping face. Her brow and mouth are relaxed. She looks so peaceful yet vulnerable without her fierce scowl. I gently wrap my arms around her and hold her against me. She stirs a bit but doesn't wake up. Instead, she snuggles even closer to me. I nuzzle my face in her hair and drink in her scent. That doesn't, that doesn't sound very healthy. Her body fits perfectly. Oh, you hear that? As if we're two pieces of a puzzle and, uh, and the gentle up and down of her breathing relaxes me. I never wish this moment... Wait, I wish this moment will never end. Say it, say it. Ooh, ooh. I have waited moments like this. Oh, I want to hold her in my arms in the tranquility of night and sleep to the rhythm of her heartbeat. The usual fire that fuels my passion. Now that I have her, I can't imagine a life without her. One thing I'm certain. One thing I'm certain. I love you. Oh, how sweet. Oh, but when you wake up. Wait, the sharp ringing of cutlery wakes me up. I glance at an empty space beside me and panic before I see Gary sitting by the table. Oh, did I wake you? Wait, did I skip something? Oh, did I wake- No, I didn't. I push myself to a sitting position. Good morning. Gary smiles at morning. me. Morning. I ordered room service. Hope that's okay. My stomach growls as the delicious smells of breakfast wafted in the air. It's been so long since I had a traditional Japanese breakfast. This is perfect. I drink calorie at the table and we dig in. I can't keep the smile off my face as we eat. What is this? Wait, is this what it's like being a couple? Calorie um, casually meets my eyes and blushes. Did you sleep okay? <laughs> calorie blushes more. I wonder how she felt waking up intertwined in my arms. Yes. Actually, I had a really weird dream. Oh? Yeah. It was you and me, and we were at a restaurant. Or, I think it was a cafe. That's not strange, considering we've done that before. I know. We were just chatting like we always do. But then, out of nowhere, you said... Oh shit, I skipped over it. I know. We were just chatting okay, no, no, like I we always do. Her face flushes, and she shakes her head. breakfast or we'll miss our train. I grin. I guess she did hear me after all. Gallery keeps shooting glances at me as we finish, uh, uh, wait, finish eating. Uh, the more she looks at me, the more embarrassed she becomes. Once I'm done with breakfast, we pack up our things and catch the train back to Yuzuki. Yuzuki, whatever it's called. Whatever it's called. Gallery stares out the window like before. I try to focus on the scenery too, but my gaze keeps slipping back to her. We finally arrived to, at Yuzuki Station. We faced each other at, on the platform. Thanks for coming with me. I had a really great time. Me too. 
He hesitates, then quickly hugs me and lets. Wait, quickly hugs me and lets go of me. Uh, I'll see you again on Monday. Grab her, grab her. If not sooner, she smiles, which and leaves to catch the bus to Ace while I drive back home. Um, it's late by the time I reach home. As soon as I do, I head straight into my room and collapse onto my bed. I couldn't have asked for a better day yesterday, but now there's something comforting about being back in my own, wait, being back in my own bed. Okay, guys. I'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of Freaking Ace of Cat Me. Bye bye. Hey guys, welcome back to Ace Academy. Uh, we woke up. Uh, actually, I didn't read what it said. Uh, as my eyelids begin to droop, my phone rings, joking me back awake. It's a call from Nikki. You need a ride? Of course, I answer. Hello. Thank God you're home. She speaks quickly. Almost out of breath. Can you pick me up from the bookstore? Can you pick me up for her voice is garbled. I fucking heard what she said. Can you pick me up from the bookstore? I can hardly make out what she's saying. What? She pauses. There's a lot of movement on the phone before you speak again. Please, can you get me? Where are you? At the bookstore. Her voice is clearly... Wait, her voice is clearer, but she sounds scared. Be there in a minute. Something isn't right. I'll be there in a few minutes. Nikki sighs and relief. Maybe she broke up with her boyfriend. What, what was his name? Eric, I think. I don't remember his name. Uh, freaking Chew. I don't know. We hang up the phone. I hurried to my bike. Nikki would tell me if she was in danger. Wouldn't she? I try not to dwell on the thought, but uh, pick up speed anyways. Luckily, traffic is on my side. I arrived a few minutes later than anticipated. Well, earlier than anticipated. The key waits for me beneath the, sh the street lamp a few feet away from the bus stop. What I make out is Ken Stark. What, what? Oh, it's Ken. What, what I said, Derek? Um, I make out Ken's dark, wait, what? Ken's dark mop of hair beside her. It's a little strange. She's not under the bus awning. What is Ken doing there? Nikki straightens up as I slow down. What feckles of blood stain her clothes and dark bruises on her skin. Ken steps and lightly greet me and I wince when I see him. 